Hey guys, welcome to the final lecture. As I mentioned in our previous lecture, this farm lecture is going to be really, really short because I'm not going to go over all the farm that I've touched on throughout the entire reproductive lecture, just the stuff that we haven't actually looked at yet. So let's dive in with our first multiple choice question. Go ahead and hit that pause button, figure this one out, and then come on back. All right, guys, the correct answer here is B. Let's go over these medications, starting with the focus of this question, which is Dega relics. Now, this is going to be used in prostate cancer, and it works by acting as a GnRH antagonist. Now, its side effects might include things like liver toxicity and hot flashes. Now, let's go through the rest of these options and go over the MOA and the adverse effects and the use of each. So, first we have clomiphene. Clomiphene belongs to the selective estrogen receptor modulators, along with tamoxifen and raloxifene. All three of these drugs act, act, are going to act as competitive inhibitors of estrogen binding to the estrogen receptors and have mixed agonist and antagonist activity depending on which tissue they're acting. Now, clomiphene acts in the hypothalamus to prevent normal feedback inhibition and thus increase the release of FSH and LH to induce ovulation. Now, this is therefore going to be useful in helping with fertility issues. Tamoxifen in the breast is going to act as an antagonist, and in the bone and the uterus, it's going to act as an agonist. Raloxifene acts as an antagonist at the breast and uterus and as an agonist at the bone. Gosserelin and luprolide are GnRH analogs, and these work as GnRH agonists if they're used in a pulsatile fashion. Now, if we wanted to use them continuously, we can achieve the opposite goal and experience GnRH antagonism that would then drop the release of FSH and LH. Make sure you remember that. Pulsatile versus continuous. And the last one here is anastrozole, which along with letrozole and eczemastane are aromatase inhibitors. Now these are going to prevent the peripheral conversion of androgens to estrogens. They do this by inhibiting the enzyme aromatase. This can be used in ER-positive breast cancer in postmenopausal women. All right, let's do our next multiple choice question. Go ahead and hit that pause button, figure this one out, and then come on back. Correct answer here is B, progestins. Now, the progestins are a class of medications that includes drugs like levonorgestrel and medroxyprogesterone. And these work by binding to progesterone receptors. They can they can serve the mucus, and they can decrease the growth and increase the vascularization of the endometrium. Now these are forms of contraception contraception that can be in pill form, IUD form, implantable form, as well as depot injection. Now the antiprogestins include both mifepristone and ulipristol, and these are competitive competitive inhibitors of progestins at the progesterone receptors. Now. These are, of course, going to be used as either emergency contraception, specifically with the drug ulipristol, or for the termination of a pregnancy, specifically with mifepristone. Let's talk for a minute here about combined contraception and copper IUDs before we move on to the other options for this question. First, combined contraceptive pills, patches, vaginal rings. These combine progestins and ethanyl estradiol. Now, these will inhibit both FSH and LH to prevent a surge of estrogen which then inhibits the LH surge that's needed mid-cycle to induce ovulation. Now, don't forget that the progestins, as I mentioned a minute ago, they can serve for mucus and inhibit endometrial proliferation. When are these types of medications contraindicated? They're contraindicated in anybody over 35 who smokes tobacco, who have a risk of cardiovascular disease, who have a history of migraines, breast cancer, or liver disease. Now, copper IUDs are interesting. These don't have medications in them. Rather, they exert their effects by producing a local inflammatory reaction that's toxic to both the ova and the sperm. This simply obstructs and prevents fertilization from taking place. Now, one of the things that's not liked with respect to the use of the copper IUDs is that they tend to be associated with dysmenorrhea. Additionally, these are contraindicated in those who have an active case of PID because it can actually prevent it from resolving. Now let's take a look at the remainder of the drugs here on this, uh, on this question. Now, tocolytics, what do they do? They relax the uterus to decrease contraction frequency. These include drugs like terbutaline, 
which exerts its effects via its beta-2 agonist activity. Nephetapine, which is of course a calcium channel blocker, and indomethacin, which is of course an NSAID. Danazole is used in cases of endometriosis and in hereditary angioedema, and it works as a synthetic androgen that acts as a partial agonist at the androgen receptors. Now this does have some unwanted side effects, including swelling, acne, weight gain, masculinization, hepatotoxicity, decreased HDL levels, as well as idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Now, finasteride here, we've touched on this many times. Remember, it's a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor that prevents the conversion of testosterone into DHT. We can use it in BPH. We can also use it to stop men from balding. Now, another male pattern baldness drug you want to keep in mind is minoxidil. This works via its direct arteriolar vasodilatory action. While we're on finasteride, which is an antiandrogen, let's look at the others in this class, which include abiraterone, flutamide, ketoconazole, and spironolactone. Okay, abiraterone is a 17-alpha hydroxylase inhibitor. We can use this in prostate cancer. Flutamide is also used in prostate cancer and is a non-steroidal competitive inhibitor at the androgen receptors. And this is going to exert its effects by decreasing steroid binding, while the first one, abiraterone, decreases steroid synthesis. Ketoconazole is another prostate cancer drug, and this works as a 17-alpha hydroxylase inhibitor. The last one here is spironolactone. This is used in PCOS, and it works as an androgen receptor inhibitor and a 17-alpha hydroxylase inhibitor. Tamzulosin is another prostate drug, but it is instead used for BPH. Now, it exerts its effects by inhibiting smooth muscle contraction through its alpha-1 antagonist action. This drug is effective against BPH because it is more selective for the alpha-1A and 1D receptors that are found in the prostate. All right, guys, that is the end of this lecture. I will see you on the next topic. Thank you.